Hi everyone, um, it's Lucy of Lucy B Makes and welcome to my uh, cushion project video. I'm going to use one of the cross stitches that I've already finished, my um, Ravenclaw badge cross stitch and turn it into a cushion by putting the uh, cross stitch onto uh, some backing and making it like a patch applique on the front of the cushion rather than sewing the um, fabric from the cross stitch directly into the cushion itself. Um, so this video is going to show you um, as I'm going along doing that and talk about what I'm using and how I'm doing it so if you want to turn one of your cross stitches into a patch um, obviously you can follow this and then make a cushion afterwards then then continue to watch. So first things first I'm going to go through um, the materials that I'm going to use uh, for this particular project um, they're pretty standard stuff that you can get in any haberdashery or fabric store, that's where I got mine, my local fabric shop. Um, so first and most important thing you're going to need is your cross stitch piece. Um, this is mine, I've washed and pressed it so that it's nice and flat and ready to go. Um, and it's my, yeah, it's my Ravenclaw pressed design. I am going to make cushions for the other three houses but I haven't finished the cross stitches yet so I've got to do that first. Um, and onto the back of that, I'm going to iron on some iron on interfacing. Uh, you can use the stitch on interfacing um, and you can choose whatever stiffness you prefer. Mine's quite a soft one. You can get different um, sort of thicknesses depending on how stiff you need whatever you're stiffening with. <laughs> um, this one I wanted to be reasonably flexible so that it's a soft cushion. You don't want it to have um, hard surfaces or anything like that if you're actually going to use it. Um, this is something I already had in my possession as part of my sort of stash of um, fabric and haberdashery supplies, um, but it's very easily accessible. Um, and behind that, I've bought uh, just a 30 centimetre by 30 centimetre sort of one foot square felt piece, and I'm going to use some um, Bonder Web. If you've never used it, it's wonderful if you're doing applique. Um, it comes on a big roll like this and it's like a two-step process. You um, iron it onto your patch side first, then you peel off the backing and then you iron it onto what you're actually applying it to. And I'm going to use this for a couple of stages. Firstly to get the cross stitch onto the felt and then to get the felt patch once that's cut around onto the cushion. I am going to stitch both of those as well. This is really just so that it, it stays in place all the way through the back of the um, fabric um, so again if the cushion's being sort of squished or, or touched that it doesn't um, sort of come away um, in any section so this is uh, going to attach it to that and obviously keep it in one place for when I'm actually stitching around it as well so um, that's what you need if you're just making a patch out of it and obviously you can then attach it to whatever else you want um, after that um, but I'm making a cushion so um, obviously I'll need some stuff to do that as well um, number one thing to do that is a cushion pad. I'm using a pre-made and obviously like fabric sealed up cushion pad rather than just wadding, um, mainly because I found it more convenient to do it this way. Um, I'm not making my cushion cover um, with a zip or um, like a fold over flap or anything like that. It's going to be completely sewn in um, it, all the way around, um, you'll, you'll see why when you see some of my fancy trimmings um, that it wouldn't really be possible to do it with a zip or anything like that. Um, and the one I've chosen is a, a 16 inch square cushion. Um, all it needs to do is be bigger than the size of the patch that you're going to be putting on it. Um, other than that you can have whatever size you like. This one seemed a good size for me and it's one I'm going to use for all of the cushions that I'm making. Um, and to cover that you'll need some fabric. Um, I found actually that the best option for me was to look at the selection that my store had in Fat Quarters. They, my store sells them individually rather than as sort of pre-made bundles or anything like that. And so I just bought a uh, fabric that I wanted and I've bought two um, but more than enough to cut out a suitable size square for the front and back to stitch together to make the cushion cover. Um, Obviously, in terms of materials, do you need some basics? Um, just got a couple of cottons um, in order to run into my sewing machine. To do that, um, it's uh, just plain white and a suitable colour blue. Um, obviously, it's Ravenclaw, so it's got to all be in blue. Um, 
to go around the edge of my cushion, you know I said about having some fancy trimmings, I have bought some of this which is flange edged braid, basically that just means it's sort of normal twisted braid but it's already got a tape uh, stitched onto one side of it which you can then um, insert into the seam of the cushion that you're making and stitch it up so that obviously just the braid shows on the outside and I've bought enough to go all the way around the edge of the cushion. And finally for the corners, because I absolutely just couldn't resist these, I've bought some tassels. <laughs> um, so um, I'm sure it wouldn't have been too difficult if I couldn't have found anything in order to make tassels of my own because it's just lengths of fabric with, other, with a loop around it. But um, lengths of fabric, lengths of floss I mean, with, um, with a loop around it. So you could make your own in any colour that you wanted, but my store actually happened to have some very suitable blue uh, ones already in stock. So I bought those. And that's everything that I'm going to need. So um, there'll be a couple of pieces of equipment, uh, really basic stuff, scissors, tape measure, pins, an iron. Um, I'm going to use some tailor's chalk because that happens to be what came with my sewing machine, but anything that you can use to mark the wrong side of the fabric, as long as it doesn't go through your fabric, you can mark it with whatever you like, it's going to be sewn into the inside of the cushion and it will never be seen again. And a sewing machine. <laughs> So now that that's everything sorted for the cushion, I'm going to go ahead and start making it. Okay, so I've got here my cross stitch piece and a piece of iron-on interfacing which I have cut down so that it's big enough to cover the whole of the back of the design that I want to, to put it on. Um, with this, it doesn't need to go all the way over the very edges of the fabric. I'm going to trim this down to much, much closer around the, the badge design so that um, when it comes a patch and goes on it'll just be that central section plus the backing. Um, the interfacing that is iron on has got a shiny side, you can probably just about see there, and it's got a, a matte side. The shiny side is the side with the glue on and that's the side that needs to go down onto the reverse of your design. Um, I've preheated my iron to a medium heat as per the instructions that came with my iron on interfacing. Obviously if you're using a different one just check what it says and recommends that you use but this is one that I've had and used on different projects and I'm quite used to how it works now. So the first thing to do is to sort of tack it down so that it doesn't move about as you're rubbing the iron over it. With that just on a bit that doesn't matter off towards the edge Apply a bit of heat and you can see already that it is stuck, it doesn't need an awful lot. And now just gently heat it across the whole of the back of the design. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I now have my design, my interfacing iron on the back of it. It stiffened it up a little bit, but the main reason I wanted to do this was in order that when I do trim it up, it should also hold together all of the fibres of the Ada, um, and obviously I'm not going to be cutting close enough to trim any of the threads in the cross stitch, and that's uh, going to hold it all nice while I attach it onto the felt, and then we'll stitch around it anyway, which will prevent any further fraying. So I've got my piece with the interfacing ironed onto the reverse. Next thing to do is going to be to cut it out. I've decided I'm going to leave a three square border all the way around, so I'll come back and show you when it's done. Okay, we're back. Um, as you can see, I'm all trimmed out here. I'm going to show you a little bit closer up. I have left three squares of the Ada all the way around. Um, you've got a couple of options, you can trim it um, with a smooth curve around, as you can see it's got the interfacing on the back which is holding it all together, or you can clip it like I did, exactly sort of square by square as you go around. Um, the interfacing is holding that all really nice and firm, no fraying or anything like that. Okay, we're back over at the ironing board with the bonder web. Again, like the interfacing, this has got a coated side 
and the paper side. The paper side is actually a backing which comes off completely after it's already been ironed onto half of your project. Um, so I'm going to take my patch piece and because I'm going to end up sewing this around the outside I'm not actually going to cut the bonder web to cover the entire edge of the piece I'm going to cut it so that it fills the majority of the central section so that it gets a good tight bond to the felt panel that I'm going to place this on um, but not so that it comes right over the edge and risks making sort of a sticky mess it also means I don't have to worry about trimming all the way around the edge exactly again so I'm going to use my uh, piece as a template in order to draw a rough shape and then cut around inside that so that I know where I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to turn this onto the paper side for drawing out and I'm going to have my design, because it's not symmetrical, I'm going to have it upside down because eventually it's going to be bonded in that direction and you don't want it to be different when you're flipping it over. In fact I can trace it through from the other side because this is quite see-through and that's going to be the easiest way to do it. So now I have very faintly, you can barely see it on camera, got the outline of the piece that I want to cut to attach onto the back of my uh, cross stitch piece. I'm going to cut that out. As you can see, I now have a suitable sized piece of bonder web to go on the back of my design. Now I've preheated my iron again, so it's already at a medium heat, which is what they recommend for the bonder web. And sticky side down, paper side up, I'm going to iron this onto the back. Lovely, that's nice and stuck on. And actually, while it's warm, you want to leave it so that the glue will completely set and seal itself to the back of your piece. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that to cool for a moment and get my felt ready. Okay, piece has cooled down and I've got my felt here. I've just given it a quick iron because it had a crease down the middle of it from where I'd got it from the shop. And now it's nice and flat. Um, I've actually turned the temperature on my iron down a little bit because it felt uh, wool, I didn't want to go blasting it with a really high heat so I may have to leave it on a little bit longer to get a secure bond um, but you just get the paper bit at the edge of the back of your design and it actually just peels away leaving behind the other half of the glue section so I'm just going to take all this backing off Go. And the other half of the bonder web is now ready to attach to my uh, other piece of fabric, my felt. And I'm going to put this on and I'm actually going to iron it from the reverse side because I don't want to put the hot iron on my stitching. And again I'm making sure that I've got enough of a gap all the way around that I can trim this out at the design afterwards. we have it. Where there was bonder web we are now completely stuck to the felt. Like I said I am going to stitch all the way around the edge here to get a fully secure bond. I didn't want to have bonder web only holding this on because over time I wanted to have confidence that it was really going to stay securely attached. Um, but that's stuck completely in the central portion. Uh, means it won't move at all when I am stitching it and also it'll prevent it sort of buckling away from the design if it's folded. Next thing to do is to sew all the way around the edge of the white here to firmly anchor it to the felt backing. Um, I've threaded up my machine with white cotton 
um, and I've also done some practice stitching on my material in order to choose what I prefer for my particular project in terms of tension and I've gone with a zigzag here a very straightforward stitch you'll find it on any machine um, and I've chosen the sort of width and distance that I think will work best for this Okay, I'm not going to lie, that was more than a little bit stressful um, going around all the details there at the top. I'm absolutely delighted with how it's come out. If I just zoom in and show you. You can see it's quite neatly attached all the way around. It's absolutely solid as a rock now. It's not going to go anywhere. It's completely sort of fray proof for the future. As you can see, I have lost some of the definition that I got from sort of just uh, clipping every individual square, but I think you can still make it out, and I'm glad that I did it rather than having a sort of smooth, rounded outline on it. I think the design is quite um, angular, particularly at the top of the shield and that, and I didn't want to lose that from the pattern. So all there's left to do now is to cut it out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually draw on first where I want to have my cut line evenly all the way around. I'm not great with scissors and I didn't really fancy eyeballing it. So I'm going to mark that all out and then I'm going to cut around it and then the patch is going to be completed. finished uh, patch. As you can see it's felt backed, cross stitch, sealed on, sewn on and ready to go. If all you're doing is making a patch out of your cross stitch which you're then going to apply onto something that already exists this is all that you would need to do. Um, you can then sew or use bonder web or whatever to attach it to whatever that you need to. Um, I know that I've sewn around this on a machine but if all I was doing was making a patch um, and I knew it wasn't going to get an awful lot of wear or anything like that um, you can very easily hand sew your cross stitch onto your um, felt backing. You don't necessarily have to use a machine. I have because uh, it's quicker for me and also I wanted it to be really really secure so that um, when this cushion's in use it's not gonna get anywhere on it. That's all for part one, how to make our cross stitch patch. Um, in part two I'm going to be making a cushion that has some braided edge and tassels as well and it's going to have our patch attached to the front of it as an applique. If you've got any comments or questions or um, thoughts or suggestions about um, this video, making the patch, please leave them in the comments below. I'm going to put a link there to part two once part two is up and we'll see you then.